In this video, I want to talk about the coronary vasculature and its relationship to dominance of the heart, which is important when we talk about the effect of a myocardial infarction. As you can see here, we have two drawings uh, from the TEMA Atlas Edition 3, and the chambers are labeled uh, right atrium 1, right ventricle 2, left atrium 3, and left ventricle 4. Remember that the left excuse me, the right ventricle is the most anterior chamber of the heart and the left atrium is the most posterior chamber of the heart. So this posterior view here is skewed in the sense that we're looking at the heart from the bottom and not from the back. So this surface here would actually sit on the diaphragm. Okay, and in addition to that, we have vis visualized here the aorta, the pulmonary trunk with its pulmonary arteries on either side, the superior vena cava, and the inferior vena cava. Okay, so the left coronary artery, which is where our start, is actually a really short artery. It emanates from the aorta for a very short distance, and I'm going to draw it dotted here simply because it's behind the pulmonary trunk at this point. And then it immediately bifurcates into the anterior interventricular artery or the left anterior descending artery. So LAD anterior interventricular artery. Um, and uh, it descends between the two ventricles and along the uh, interventricular septum on the anterior surface of the heart. The other branch is called the circumflex artery and it branches this way. It goes underneath the left auricle, which demarcates the left atrium, and swings around the heart this way. So that is the circumflex artery. Okay. Pretty simple. On the right side, the right coronary artery emanates from the right side of the aorta and travels underneath the right auricle and in the right atrioventricular groove and swings around the heart this way on the right side. Notice also that the circumflex artery is traveling in the left anterior, uh, or sorry, the left atrioventricular groove. Okay, so now what happens on the, the inferior surface of the heart is typically the right coronary artery will turn and travel between the two ventricles on the uh, posterior side or posterior or inferior side uh, between the right and left ventricle um, as the posterior interventricular artery or the posterior descending. So posterior descending. We'll label this one as um, right coronary artery. We'll label this one as circumflex, which we did there. We'll label this as RCA. We'll label that. Okay. Now notice that the circumflex artery ends at about the same place where the coronary sinus is located, and I'll go over the veins in a second. Okay. This is fairly typical. LAD goes down the front. Posterior descending goes down the back, right coronary goes around the right margin, and left um, coronary art or and circumflex goes around the left. Okay, this is what's called a right dominant heart. And the reason why it's called a right dominant heart is because the posterior descending comes from the right coronary artery. Now, a left dominant heart, we have the same arrangement with the left coronary artery, which comes down to become the left anterior descending. We have the circumflex artery, which comes around. We have the right coronary artery, which swings around. But in this case, the posterior descending comes from the left coronary artery 
uh, specifically the circumflex. So the left dominant heart, the posterior descending comes from the LCA. Okay, so why is this important? Well, in uh, myocardial infarction, that is typically caused by a thrombus uh, located in one of the coronary arteries. So um, if I have a blockage in any one of these arteries, it's going to affect a large amount of heart tissue. Most of the time, these blockages, uh, well, I should, I should say a lot of the time, these blockages happen in the left coronary artery branches. So in a right dominant heart, if I have a blockage, and I'll draw this, I'll draw this in um, green here. If I have a right dominant heart and I have a blockage in the, uh, the LAD right here, you know, that, that's going to uh, hurt the ventricles, uh, but it's gonna be no different if I had a blockage there in a right dominant heart or in a left dominant heart. But if I had a blockage in the circumflex artery in a right dominant heart, here we go, then my uh, vascular, um, or my tissue that's going to not receive the vascular territory is limited to this region right here. Because the posterior descending artery comes from the right coronary. But if I have a blockage in the circumflex on a left dominant heart, I'm going to lose the entire um, left ventricle because the circumflex will supply the entire region uh, on the left side. In addition, what's not seen here is the interventricular septum um, is going to be mostly destroyed in the left dominant heart. So that's the clinical significance. Okay, so um, while we're at it, let's draw in the veins. So the um, left anterior descending artery travels with the great cardiac vein. And the great cardiac vein takes a turn and will travel with the circumflex and drain into the coronary sinus. The um, middle cardiac vein travels to the posterior descending artery and drains right into the coronary sinus. And the small cardiac vein travels with the right coronary artery and drains into the coronary sinus. And that is the same whether you're talking about a right dominant heart or a left dominant heart. The coronary sinus is a big uh, bulge right here in the, in the vessel. It's really easy to see. And it is one of the vessels that drains right into the right atrium along with the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Okay, I think that's it for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know if you have any questions.